In this video, you'll learn how to establish a backend for the web page we made earlier. If you haven't watched the video yet, please return by clicking on the pop-up banner above. Or, you can keep watching. First, we must define a back-end developer. Any web application has two parts, the front-end or client side, and the back-end or server side. The front-end comprises of the web pages that you see and interact with in your browser. These pages are often built by front-end developers. When you enter a URL, click a link, or submit a form, your browser will send a request which is connects to a web server. When a web server receives a request for a resource, it must respond with that resource. Back-end developers programs the web servers to respond with the correct resources. Before moving on to back-end development, we need first set up our system as a server. Download WAMP server and install it. Link in the description below. When we built the website's front end the last time, we simply created an HTML and CSS file. We must now run them from the server. So, go to the C folder and look for the WAMP64 folder, then go to www and create a folder with our project name, which I named login, and paste our HTML and CSS files into that folder. The next step is to create a database. Run the WAMP server, then open a web browser and enter the address localhost. This will take us to the server page, where we can see our project name. Next. Click to phpMyAdmin and enter root as the username and null as the password. Choose new. Then enter the database name I've given as website login. Now that the database has been created. Next, we must define a table called login details with three columns. Give the first column the name ID and set the AI flag to true. Simply means auto increment, which will make this column the primary key. Then make the second column username and change its data type to varchar with a length of 200. The last column will be password with the same data type and length as the username. Then click the save button. Let's add some data to the table. Go to insert and enter whatever ID you like, as well as a login and password. Then press the go button. The data will be entered into the table. Now that the database and table is created. Let's have a look at back-end languages. So the front-end had HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for structure, appearance, and functionality. The back-end language, well, there are a number of them. There's Python, PHP, Java, and even though JavaScript is a front-end language, it's also a back-end language. Today we will be working on PHP language. Let's get started on the back-end. To be there, open our HTML file and change the extension to PHP. When we worked on HTML, I showed you that code should be written in HTML tags. Similarly, all of the codes in this document are written in between PHP tags. First, we must specify the database connection. To create a variable in PHP, put dollar in front of the variable name, then use the built-in function MySQLI connect which takes the server name as localhost, the username as root, and the password as null. Let us define our objective before we start hard coding. Let's go to our login page, where you can enter your username and password. When we click the login button, the username and password should be validated against the database details. So the button has a function here. Now, let's go back to programming. When we were coding the CSS section, we used the class name to obtain that specific tag on the CSS page. Similarly, in PHP, we use a name attribute. I'm naming the login button login btn. When we click on this button, this form should be submitted in post method to the login page. This if statement will be triggered or accepted when we get a post method. We must declare our username and password in the if clause and then use dollar underscore post to get the value from the HTML tag to PHP. Next, we will construct the SQL query that will retrieve all values from the table that have the username that we specified. The MySQLI query function is then used to run this query. Then, to get the value, we use the MySQLI fetch ASIC function. Then we'll compare the password value from the user with the password we extracted from the database. 
If it matches, we'll print something and redirect to another page. Let's make a page called index.html and fill it with simply the word, welcome. If it does not match, we will display a banner using the JavaScript alert function. I forgot to add the name tag for the login and password in the HTML tag. So, for username, use name as the username itself. Use password as the name for the password. Our backend is now programmed. Let us now look at the end outcome. I am entering the login and password that we have entered into the database. Let's see what happens. It has now been redirected to another page. As you can see from the hello that we entered in the HTML tag. Let's try a failed case where I entered in the invalid password. As you can see, it alerted us with a login failure banner. So we've successfully developed the backend for the earlier login page. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button to stay up to date.